Good morning, good morning, good morning, grand rising, rich rising, happy new day, all that, all that beautiful stuff. How y'all doing this morning? Double tap on my screen as y'all coming into the room. Y'all know I'm still over here trying to get y'all adjusted. I be trying to get get the cameras right. You know what I'm saying? When you working with when you working with three of them, it kind of make it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And you're not a professional. It kind of yeah. You be you be working with it a little bit. How y'all doing this morning? Grand rising, rich rising, happy new day. To each and every one of you guys hoping and praying y'all are having the best morning ever because i'm gonna tell you right now i'm in my best mood on this beautiful morning i can't even lie to you i feel good my energy is up understand that yes yeah, stomach it stomach is getting you know what i'm saying a little, little trimming down over here i got some trimming happening over here double tap on my screen this morning i don't think i ever been this excited to wait on sunday to be able to get on the scale you know, i ain't never been this it's excited, man, but I'm doing the countdown right on over here every single day. You know what I'm saying? Day 19 of no meat. That's right. Day 19 of no meat, and we are rocking and rolling. 103 days left until 2025. Double tap on that screen. How many days you got left in this year? Put, put it inside the chat real quick. You got 103 days left till 2025. Double tap on my screen. Double tap on my screen. It's the 122-day challenge. We are on right right now inside of the Patreon. It's something that we've been working on, me and the Chosen family. We started September the 1st, and it's going to go all the way through to the end of this year. That's right. We walking out with a win. We walking out with great energy. We work walking out with great vibration. When we walk up out of this year, we're not walking out the same way that we walked in. That is our commitment. That is our goal. That's what we're working towards. That's what we wake up every single day and get into prayer, meditation, and affirmation and got it attached right on to that. We're making a sacrifice because we want that win. Yeah, yeah, put it in the chat. 103, baby, 103. Mm, 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 mm. 100 and three days left. Come on. Hey, Marley, how are you, babe? 100 and three days left. And 20 until 2025. Double tap on that screen. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Billard. I appreciate you. Uh, double tap on my screen, y'all. I see y'all. Y'all got y'all 220. I see y'all over there, Facebook. Double tap on my screen. Where y'all at? TikTok. TikTok, send me some love over here so we can get started. Y'all at uh, 2.3, well, 2.4K. Double tap on that screen. Get us up to 10K so that we can get started on this morning. This is Walk Word and Worship over here. You're going to get your, what, your three wins a day. That's a mental win, a physical win win and a spiritual win you get that all right here um at morning walk word and worship three positive deposits inside of your life that's mind body and soul and that right there my dear is what top tier self-care so over here we help you start your day off with great energy we help you start your day off in a good mood and even if you show up and you in a bad mood we work our way all the way through that bad mood so that by the time you get to your desk you get to your office you get to your house you in a whole better whole nother mood a better mood understand that double tap on my screen. Thank you so much, Tanya. I appreciate you. Double tap on my screen real quick. Appreciate you, Felicia. Thank you so much, man. Double tap on that screen. Candace Bass, thank you so much. I see y'all over here. Y'all showing that love. I got 505 over here on Facebook. Okay. Okay. We got seven over here on IG. We got seven IG. We need three more badges on IG. Double tap on my screen. Y'all are up to 5.5K. The goal is to get to 10K. Double tap on that screen this morning. If you are happy to be here on this morning, if you're great grateful for to be here this morning if your heart is filled with praise this morning if you just like you know what coach it's just being able to experience this new day understand that i'm about to take this day and i'm gonna be intentional with this day i'm gonna take this day and i'm gonna operate you know what i'm saying and this day like i'm a person that is in control i'm not letting nothing or nobody upset my day not letting nobody get up under my skin not let nobody ruin my mood pierce my peace all today i'm going to be intentional with how I handle it all day today. And I yeah, just just try it out. Just try it out. I just yeah, come on now. I just try it out. 
Just try it out. I just want you to, I just want you to try it out. Thank you, Danielle. I just want you to try it out. Today, starting today, today's Thursday, the 19th, from today until next Thursday. Y'all know I always got something that I want y'all to do. So yes, double tap on my screen. I got something that I want y'all to do starting from today. From to this Thursday to next Thursday, one of the things that I want you to focus on is doing something that you don't want to do. If you don't make your bed every morning when you get up, yeah, starting today, I want you to make your bed every single day that you get up. That means that you're going to have to get up in enough time to turn around and make that bed up. Just because I want you to see how it feels to when you get back in it and it's all per perfectly made up, all fluffy and whatnot. If you're the type of person that'll walk out of the house and leave, straighten it up before you leave. Understand, find that one thing that you cannot stand doing. Like, I don't, I just, I don't like to do it. If it's reading that book, make yourself sit down. Starting today, sit down and read a chapter of that book. If it's, oh yeah, well, you know, I just don't be having time to pray and I don't have to make time to do it for the next from this Thursday to next Thursday do it every single day find that one thing that really challenges you and I want you to work on it I want you to work on it with intentionality I want you to work on it and do it your very best at it on purpose find that one thing that, that, that one thing find that one thing one thing it could be big, it could be small, that one thing, and just do it. And just do it. Just find that one thing and go at it. Right? You want me to tell you why? Because what we what we what, what we, we want out of life is attached to the, those things. It's just, it's attached to the things that we don't want to do. It's attached to the places that we don't want to go. It's attached to the responsibility that we don't want to have. Understand that. Yeah, that, that it's always gonna be attached to that heart. Just know that it's going to be attached to that heart every, sing every single time. We have to learn how to do things that are hard for us. We have to learn how to do things that are challenging for us. We have to learn how to do things that we really don't want to do. But guess what? We got to do it. Understand, you notice what I said? We don't want to do it, but we need to do it. That's a no for somebody. You have to learn how to do the things that are challenging to you. You have to learn how to do the things that you need to do and not the things that you always want to do. When you're doing what you want to do, that is a privilege. Understand that you're doing what you want to do. That's a privilege. But when you're doing what you need to do, you're doing something that is beneficial to your growth. It's beneficial to your life in one way or another. When you get up and go to work, you get up and go to work because you need to eat. You need a place to stay. You need a car to drive. You need fuel for that car. These are things that you need. Understand that. You have to, yeah, you have to treat your life with that same type of respect. I need to pray. I need to fast. I need to meditate. I need to read. I need to study on a regular basis. I need these things the same way that I need my job, same way that I need my car, same way that I need my food. I need this as well. Understand, you have to have a balance. You have to have a balance. So what are you telling me? Where y'all at? Y'all at 17.5. To, to today's topic is this right here. I had to wait to make sure that they was in place, right? So yeah, that's the challenge. I want you to find that one thing that you dislike doing, that one thing that you, mm, you I ain't finna do that, right? I want you to challenge. Challenge yourself to get it done. Starting from this Thursday to next Thursday. That one thing, lock it in, write it down, and you be intentional about getting that one thing done. You're going to do it for seven days, and I guarantee you after that seven days, then you're going to start doing it every single morning. Why? Because you're going to find out that it's not as hard as you thought that it was going to be. That it's not as difficult as you thought that it was going to be. You thought that it was going to be a big old inconvenience. It was going to do and it. You're going to find out that it's done. The biggest problem that we have is getting started. The biggest problem that we have is actually stepping out. It's the execution part. We know how to make the plan all day. We know how to organize it, how to strategize it. We know how to write and take the notes and all of that. But the problem comes in is that the problem come in is when it's time to put those things in to practice. When you have to practice the notes that you wrote down, when you have to exercise the notes that you took down, when you have to put all of that information that you've been learning, when you have to put that into play, 
play, then that's where the struggle comes in. And what I want you to do is find that one thing. If it's journaling, then I want you journaling for seven days. If it's updating your planner, following your planner, I want you to purposely follow your planner the whole entire week. If it's reading, I want you to sit yourself down and get that chapter read. If it's praying, I want you to intentionally sit down, put in some time for you to get your prayer going. Understand, whatever that thing is, even if it's, like I said, making a bed, even if it's straightening up the living room before you walk out the door, do that thing. Do it. Stop being afraid of hard. Our topic this morning that we're coming from, we're going to talk about results, not reasons. We're in a season right now. We have 103 days left into 2025. You have 103 days left into this year. I want you to know that you don't have no time to be playing around. You ain't got no time to be tiptoeing. You ain't got no time to be distracted. You ain't got no time to be over there getting in nobody's gossip and nobody's tea. You ain't got no time to be over there doing nothing that is not beneficial to your growth and your, design, or your assignment. If it is not adding value to your life, you ain't got no business of even paying it no attention. What you say, Coach? is results not reasons we don't need no more reasons as to why you can't get it done we don't need no more excuses as to why you can't get it done we don't want to hear no more or whining and crying about why you can't get it done it's time to start producing some results in your life it's time for you to start showing up for yourself it's time for you to pick up yourself understand that dust your little self off wipe them tears up off of your eyes and get back into this game of life constantly Whining and crying ain't going to fix you. Having a constant day-to-day -day pity party won't fix you. Over there accepting all these negative things and speaking them over your life won't fix you. Understand that it's time for you to heal you from the inside all the way out. What you say, coach, from the inside out. It's time for you to do the self work. That's it. That's red ink right there. What you say? Baby, it's time for you to do the self work. We're tired of the excuses. Some of you guys need to look at yourself directly in the mirror and say that to yourself. You know what? All you done done was gave yourself reasons. Reasons of why you can't be happy. Reasons of why you can't be successful. Reasons of why you can't have joy. Reasons of why you can't have peace. And it was my mama and them. And it was my daddy and them. And it was my great granny and them. And it was my uncle and them. And it was my auntie and them. And it was my cousins. And they never fit in with nobody and I came up on the wrong side of the tracks and the school did me wrong and I went and through this and I went through that suck it up let it go it's time to move forward in life oh I had a bad childhood oh I had a bad teenage life and then I end up strung out doing this that and the third and so what those are things that you went through that doesn't have to be who you are at your core self those are experiences that you had those were decisions that you made way back then you are not even that person no more. How you been clean for 20 years and still talking about, oh, hey, my name is such and such and, and yeah. That, don't nobody want to hear that? Operate in your new self. Show up as your new self. Operate in your new self. Show up in your new self. Stop giving place to the enemy. Stop identifying as your old broken self. Stop introducing yourself to the world as your old broken self. That is no longer the individual that you are. You're not, hey, I got my heart broke. You're not, hey, somebody let me down. You're not, hey, I got violated. That's not who you are. That's an experience that you had to go through. That's something that you had to deal with. Was it unfortunate? Yes. Did you deserve it? No. Understand that and we get it, but it's not just you. Move on. You got 103 days. It's going to be yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. I'm on, I'm on feet. I'm on feet. I'm on feet. Let's be real. Let's be real. You have 103 days. Listen to me when I tell this to you. You have 103 days left in tw before 2025. And I need for you to understand something. It's not just you. We're at a day and time right now where you cannot continue to make excuses for why you are broken. It's time for you to fix yourself. It's not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Understand that. It's time for you to stop making excuses, giving all these different reasons of why you behave the way that you behave. And it's time for you to start fixing your behavior. 
behavior. It's time for you to start correcting yourself. Thank you, Candace Bash. I appreciate you. It's time for you to start holding yourself accountable for your life. Thank you, Antoinette. It's time for you to start putting on your big girl, your big boy underwear and saying, you know what? This is my life and I refuse to continue to sit over here stuck and stagnant. I refuse to sit over here balled up, hoarding anger, hoarding frustration, hoarding heartache, hold, hold on on to betrayal as if those things are going to do something for me. They're doing something, but it ain't what you want them to do. They're doing nothing but making you bitter and hard hearted. That's all that is doing. The more that you hold on to pain, the more that you hold on to heartache, the more that you hold on to your yester years and hold on to those yester tears and mope and cry. The only thing that it does is make you hard hearted. The only thing that it does is make you bitter. The only thing that it does is make you be a ball of anger. Understand that in, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really about to give it to you. Double tap on my screen. And the other thing that you're doing, it makes you hard hearted. It makes you bitter. And you're also doing what? You are also giving the enemy the victory. Oh, I know you don't want to hear that, but it's the truth. It's a lot of y'all that's like, wait a minute, coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They won't be real with you because they're your friends and they're concerned about your feelings. They're not going to be real with you because they family members and they're concerned about your feelings. But I'm your coach, baby. It's my job to tell you the truth. It's my job to help you move forward in life. It's my job not to sugarcoat it, not to dilute it, not to water it down. My job is to give it to you real, to give it to you raw, to give it to you direct every single time that you wake up up with that mentality of you're going to be bitter, you're going to be bothered, you're going to be hard hearted you're giving the enemy the victory every single day you're giving them the victory they damaged you and now they get to watch you struggle they get to watch you walk around man they get to watch you walk around with your face bowed up, posting all your sad posts. They get to watch you go through that. You will not damage me and then have the satisfaction of watching me struggle to put the pieces back together again. The devil is a lie. Understand it. Yeah, yeah. I can't give you that right there, sweets. It hurt. It did hurt. I'm not going to lie about the impact that it had on my life. It damaged something to inside of me, but it did not stop me. I'm going to get up every single day and I'm going to put my best foot forward, not because it's about you, but because it's about me. Every single day, I am going to live up to my fullest potential. Not because it's about somebody else, but it's because it's about me. I deserve this win. After you went through hell and high water in your life, after you experienced some of the experiences that some of us then had, after you didn't cried in the middle of the night while everybody else was asleep, why you didn't pace the floor of many a nights when times you should have been tied up in your favorite blanket, but you got to pace the floor because you're worried. You have to pace the floor because you're stressed out. You got to pace the floor because you don't know how them bills is going to be paid all that time that you was in those situations crying in the shower because you was trying to hide from the world that you were broken in the inside after you didn't survive that type of pain after you didn't survive that type of heartache after you didn't came back from all the things that everybody thought was going to be the end of you after you and experience those type of experiences you have got to understand that I deserve this I deserve to walk around with my head in the air. I deserve to have my chest up. I deserve to take up space. I deserve to be heard. I deserve to be valued. I deserve to be respected. And anything and anybody that don't give me what I deserve, then it's snip, snip, I'll get out your face. My detachment is what top tier. I deserve it. Come on. So fat. You settle for less because you don't know your worth. You settle for less than what you deserve because you don't, you don't see yourself as valuable because you keep seeing yourself as your old self. You settle in for less because you keep showing up like the old broken version of you. The version of you that had low self-esteem, the version of you that had low confidence, the version of you that did not know your worth, did not know if you were coming or going. You keep showing up as the old version. So when you see yourself as that old version, then that's exactly how you're going to treat yourself like that old version. And what I'm telling you on this morning that you have to start stepping up and walking in your new identity understand that I'm no longer that individual hi my name is whole hi my, hi, my name is healthy hi my name is confident hi my name is beautiful hi my name is beautifully made when you show up you should show up as your new self hey hi you doing hello somebody you got to reintroduce yourself to folk you have to let folk know that I'm not that person that I used to be and we struggle with that we are in a real life identity crisis 
understand. You don't know if you're coming or going. And if you don't know who you are, trust and believe the enemy won't waste no time telling you. If you don't know who you are, the enemy most definitely will call you what he want to call you. And after he call it and you believe it, you give life to it. What you say, coach? Oh, double tap on the screen. Okay, I'm going to drink water because you miss it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's a fact. <laughs> it's, it's a fact. If you don't know who you are, if you don't know what you bring to the table, if you don't know, come on, Nick, Nick, I just, I just want to tell you, if you don't know who you are, then guess what the enemy will do? The enemy will let you know who you are. He'll let you know who you are. And the moment that you believe it, then you give life. He will let you know who you are. That's one. Two. And once you receive it, then three, what happened? You give life to it. You hear it, receive it, give life to it. Hear it, receive it, give life to it. And that's the reason why coach tell you what? Be careful about who has your ear. Because whoever has your ear also have your heart. Whoever has your ear also have your heart. And you have to protect your heart because what? Every single thing that you do flows from that. The heart is where the center of your emotions rests. Understand that so whoever has your ear also has your heart and have access to your feelings. Understand that and all you gotta do is feel love if it feel like love then all of a sudden here you are giving life to something that's not really you they over there you like oh they're playing me like a fool because you fell for it hello wait a minute coach don't don't do that like that i got to though understand that. oh they playing me like i'm a fool they treating me like a fool and guess what they're treating you that way because you fell for it they they they, they, they called you that you believe that and then they yeah yeah and then you started acting as if that's what you you were. You started giving life to what they were calling you. Understand that. Well, why do you say that? Because understand if they can look you in your face, if they, they, thought you, they treat you like a fool. That's what y'all are telling me. Of course, they think I'm a fool or something, right? And let me give you an example real quick. Yeah, they think, like, they think I'm a fool or something, coach. Ain't no way in the world they think that they can do this and do that. Wait a minute. What, did you leave? No. Oh, okay. Well, then that's why they feel that way. They, what, what happened in that situation? There was no consequence. They were able to disrespect you and still have access to you. They was able to disrespect you and still reap the same benefits of you that was able to disrespect you and you sat right there and you took it so the name that they called you was very fitting oops <laughs> oops they treating you how they see you and you acting like you don't see it they treating you with oh, oops yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, double tap on my screen. Reasons. No, no, not results. We're done. Yeah, we, we, we need results. No more reasons. I don't need no more reasons for why you can't fix your life. I don't need no more excuses for why you can't fix your life. Understand that you, it's your responsibility. Your life is going to be your responsibility. Whatever it is that you give your attention to, understand that that's, that's what you pick and choose. You have a divine right of choice to say, you know what, that right there, that's not for me. So because I know that it's not for me, I'm not giving it my time or attention. I'm not entertaining Nothing that is not for me. How that song go? Who this for? Baby, you better start looking at some folk. I mean, baby, who this for? Who, 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 who this, who? W-H-O, this, D-I-S, for, F-A. Who this for? <laughs> Broken English, but powerful. Who, 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 who this for? Because I, I, I know this ain't for. F A me. I know I know this ain't for me. Who 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 this for? Understand that it's some people in your life that you have to show up. There you go, GG. Who this for? Cause I know this right here ain't for me. I know you ain't think I'm finna go for this. I know you ain't think that you about to talk to me like that. I know you don't think that you about to walk me like a dog. I know you don't think that you're about to use and abuse me. I know you don't think that you're gonna in and out my life at your own benefit. I know, baby, who this for? Understand that we're in a season of we need results not reasons I don't care why you are the way that you are fix it I don't care what you didn't went through in your yesteryears it's time to fix it and I know that there's some folk that say coach that's too real that's too raw that's too direct that's too blunt you can't just go out here and say stuff like that to folk they're gonna say you insensitive they're gonna say you angry they're gonna say you too aggressive they're gonna say you're too passionate they're gonna say you can't just tell that two people like 
like that. The devil is a lie. Understand that I can tell that to people like that. And guess what? The folk that are sick and tired of being broken, that are sick and tired of being hard hearted, that are sick and tired of being down bad, that are sick and tired of being emotionally unbalanced, spiritually drained, that are tired of living the way that they live, they want to hear it. They're like, give it to me like that right now. Yeah, 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 get in my face. I need somebody to tell me the truth about me. Yeah, 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 because my problem is everybody else tiptoeing around it. Everybody else giving me reasons for why they understand while I'm down bad. They giving me excuses to stay right here. They providing me with crutches to walk on. They being enablers in my life. And here you go, yelling and screaming at me. Here you go, holding me accountable. Here you go, making me take back ownership, authority over my life. Understand what, they, what we learned inside the Patreon when the student is ready the teacher will appear you have some folk yeah 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 come on let's be real about it so when you're ready for what I got then you will show up when you get hungry for it you will show up you will show up no pad and two ink pens you will be ready and those that are not ready people that want to stay down people that are still looking for reasons and excuses to sit over there and sit and soak in self pity and whine and cry about their life and their abandonment issue daddy issues mother issues those folk they'll sit right over over there, but people that are ready to grow, they go, they, they, they locked in. They're like, wait a minute, I need that right there. That's what I need right there. Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all said, nah, that ain't aggression. That's passion. I need that right there. Y'all say that's anger. That ain't anger. That's that's mama them. That's that's mama them. You know how you had that that mama. I'm on you because I love you. I'm telling it to you because I love you. I want to see you do well in life. I want to see you grow in life. I want to see you evolve in life. That's what I get from it. I get auntie. I get big sister. I get yeah yeah. That's what I get from it. And you have to know the difference in between the four. Some some folk just want attention. They ain't trying to heal. Some folk don't want to heal. They want attention. Why? Because they love, they, yeah, they want attention. And they know as long as they stay broken, then they're going to get that type of attention. That's what they want. They, they are attention seekers. So you have to know the difference in between people that want to grow, that want to heal, that want to move forward in life versus people that want the attention from being broken. So you can, yeah, a person that just want attention, you can give them all types of ways out. You can give them all kind of remedies. You can give them all type of strategies. You can give them all type of information. You can give them all type of coaching lessons, therapy lessons, all type of everything. So you can give it to them, give it to them, give it to them, give it to them. And guess what? They'll still sit over there and say they broken. They'll still be claiming stress and anxiety. They'll still be speaking negatively over their life. They won't utilize not now thing that you done gave them. I told you to pray. You ain't prayed yet. I said take the notes. You ain't wrote a thing down yet. I said go on the fast. You say you can't even fast. You come up with every single reason to go against what they didn't take. That's how you know. That's how, yeah. That's how you know it's a waste of your time. Come on. That's how you, what you say, coach? That's how you know. You want to know the difference in between somebody that's ready to grow and somebody that's ready to just sit there. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hurry. They, they going nowhere fast. They going, they going nowhere fast. You want to know the difference in between somebody that's ready to grow and somebody that's going absolutely nowhere fast. A person that's ready to grow, that's ready to evolve, they show up and they're ready to snap right there into action. You said me praying, I'm praying three times a day. You said me reading, I'm reading two chapters in a, in a self-help book and one chapter out of the Bible. Pull out, pull out. I got the study Bible, so I'm not just reading a chapter. I'm dissecting the chapter. I'm getting it all the way down. You said show up to support group. I'm in the support group. I'm praying on Tuesdays and I'm also praying on Thursdays with the group. I'm showing up to the, some mental health class on Thursday night. I'm dissecting the books and the scriptures right there with y'all. I'm on every morning walk in worship. I am a part of the challenge. I'm up at 745 meditating right there with y'all, baby. I'm ready to grow. I am making sacrifices. I am planning and prioritizing my time to get into alignment. I want this. I want this more than anything. When you want it, you do what? You eat, sleep, and breathe it. Understand when you want it, you do what? You eat, sleep, and breathe that thing that you I want it that bad. That's right. So when y'all get up, I get up. When y'all online, I'm online. Six o'clock when everybody else is relaxing on the couch, I'm right there checking in with y'all. I don't care if y'all ain't talking about nothing but food. I'm right there. I'm locked in with the like-minded folk because I know in between each one of those, I'm going to get a message. I eat, sleep, and breathe this new life that I want. You got to you gotta eat, sleep, and breathe it. Get your ink pans out. Cause rude awakening for some folk. Mm. Yesterday I told you how bad do you want it. 
And I told you, you have to have, you have to want it more than them folks out there on the outside don't want you to have it. You got some folks in their life that, yeah, no, they, they might love you, but they don't want you to have it. They might love you, but they don't want you to see you be doing better than them. They love you, but yeah, yeah, come on now. Yeah, they, they, they love you, but at the same time, at the same time, they don't want you to live past those limits. Ain't nobody went as far as you trying to go. Ain't nobody did all that you trying to do. Ain't nobody ever had the mindset that you got right now. Understand that so they don't understand where you coming from. They they don't see your vision. They, yeah, yeah. They, 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 wait a minute. They like, oh, you talking that talk. You doing too much. It don't require all of that. Yeah, you have to get prepared for those type of folk. But I want y'all got y'all in pins. If y'all got y'all in pins, I just want y'all to write. We ready inside the chat real quick. Double tap on my screen. If you, if you locked in with me, if you understand what's going on right now, if you picking up what I'm putting down, I want you to double tap on my screen. Let me get some love over here on IG. TikTok, let me get some love. Double tap on my screen. Let me get some love. We almost at 100K on TikTok. Double Tap on that screen for me real quick. Mm. That's a fact, Nick Nick. That's a fact. Oh, I want, I want it. There we go. I see the re readies over here on Facebook. Like, we ready. <laughs> Thank you, Yolanda Casey. I appreciate you, Rachel White, as well. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, Kelly. Thank you, Crystal Love. I see the flowers coming. Thank you, Ashley, for the flowers. Let me get some love over there. There we go. Appreciate you, Spiritual G. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is that uh, uh, Tina? Tina. Tina Marie. Thank you so much. Nick Nick, I appreciate that badge. If you picking up what I'm putting down, come on, send me some love. Thank you, God's plan. Thank you, Door Door. Appreciate you, Drop Top, Kush King. I see you, G Beauty. I see you. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, Mini Dash. I see you, uh, Richard Ricardo. I see you. Thank you so much, 101. I see. Okay, TikTok, let's go. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Send some love over there. If you're getting a word this morning, if you're getting motivated, inspiration, or confirmation on this morning, if that's you, if you're just saying, Coach, you know what? You on my toes real bad this morning because I tell you what, I do be playing with myself sometimes. Sometimes I don't be doing what I need to do in my life. I don't be showing up the way that I need to show up. I don't be handling in business the way that I need to, and if they and it, and it hit when you say people treat you how they, they how they see you, and you're absolutely right. I come and say, man, they they think that I'm stupid, they think that I'm a fool, they think I'm this, that, and the third. But then when I think about the situation, the way that you put it out there, black beans, I appreciate you. When you put it out there the way that you did, you doggone right. I see why they look at me that way. I see why they treat me that way. I see why they talk to me that way because I let them. I let them do all of that, and I stay connected. I let them do all of that, and I continue to talk to them. I let them do all of that and still lay up in my house. I let them do all of that and still reap benefits of me. I let them do all of that and I still show them the utmost respect. I see why they did. I didn't have to disrespect them. I didn't have to get down on their level. I didn't have to exchange that, live that energy with them. All I had to do was cut them off. Understand that. They look at me like I'm weak. They look at me like I'm gullible. They look at me like I'm somebody to play with because I let them do certain things and don't go. Ooh, coach. Come on. Y'all ready for that note? I seen y'all say y'all ready. 103 days left in 2024. And I want you to know something. Ain't paying ready, right? Every day that you wait, W-A-I-T, you waste. W-A-S-T-E. Every day that you wait, you waste. 103 days left to 2025. Oh, come on. Come on, highlight it. Highlight it over here on TikTok for me. Every day that you wait, you waste. That right there will teach all by itself. That friend, I see you. Friend said, whoa, baby. <clears throat> don't, I, I asked you, was you ready? Y'all said y'all was ready in the chat. Now it just, now reality just hit. Now, yeah, now reality just hit. Everybody like, oh, wait, hold up, hold up. Thank you so much, Evangelist Britt. Thank you, LaShonda. Yeah, wait a minute. Every day that you wait, you waste. Every day that you make an excuse, that you give a reason as to why you are the way that you are, then guess what? You are 
wasting that day. Every day that you wake up and you don't respect, you don't honor yourself, that you don't follow through with your commitments. Every single day that you wake up and you give excuses, you give reasons for why you can't get that job done, why you can't do this and why you can't do that. You just waste another day. You just wasted another day. And I'm not sure about how everybody been moving, but I know for a fact we about to slide over into quarter four. And it's some of y'all that played around in quarter one. Some of y'all played around in quarter two. Some of y'all played around halfway quarter in quarter three and just got on board in September, which meant you didn't love, you didn't waste it over half. Over half. You yeah, yeah. Let's be real. You didn't waste out of 365 days. You didn't waste it 260 the other. Yeah. Out of 365 days, you done wasted 260 of them. Because you're still laid up with the op. Still dealing with the same generational curses. Still dancing with the same demons. Still going through the same thing. Pain. Holding on to the same headache. Crying them. Same tears. Making those same excuses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wasted out of 365 days. You done wasted 260 of them. Why? Because you fail at execution. You didn't do what you were supposed to do. You made commitments to yourself and you did not follow through. You said, I all set all these goals. Oh, this is my three-month goal. This is my six-month goal. This is my nine-month goal. And you fulfilled not now one of them. Understand that. You, yeah, yeah, they, you, you started on them. You did a good job starting. Huh. But you completed none. Let's just be real about it. And the reality of the situation is every day that you wait Every day that you procrastinate, every day that you drag your feet, every day that you come up with a reason, every day that you come up with an excuse as to why you cannot do, you just wasted, you just wasted that day. And I'm going to be even realer than that. How dare you? How you wasted a day that somebody was praying to have and wasn't afforded that opportunity. How you waste a day that somebody laid in a hospital bed and wanted to get up, wanted to walk away, but wasn't able to. How you waste a day that somebody is on their knees and just praying and snotting up, that's fasting, that's worshiping. All they wanted was that day and wasn't afforded it. And look at you, you got that day and you took it for granted. You got that day and you fumbled it. You got that day and you straight played with it. Understand, that's what it's like every single time that you waste a day every day that you wake up and you don't follow through every day that you wake up and you got an excuse and you're whining and crying and sitting in self-pity and whining about yesteryears and being caught up in yester pain and refusing to move forward in your life you're wasting another day you're wasting the days that somebody else is praying for perspective Think about it. Every day that you wake up and you have the ability to think on your own, to speak activities of your limbs, it's a brand new day that God is giving you, that he's granting you to be able to do what? Do over. This is my do over day. I don't care what I went through yesterday, what I did last week, last month, whatever, baby. This is my do over day. This is my second chance. This is him saying, I know you messed up. I know you stumbled yesterday, but this is a brand new day. This is another day where you can get it right. This is another day for you to take you know, hold of this thing. This is another day for you to make a difference. Understand that all you got to do is utilize this day. It's like every day that you wake up. He's saying, I forgave you. Every day. Come on, that's notes right there. What you say? It's like every day that you open your eyes and you got breath in your body, activities of your limb, clothing your right mind. He's saying to you in that moment, this is your second chance. This is another day for you. I, get, I love you so much that I gave you another day in spite of you. I know you fumbled all through yesterday, but I gave you another day in spite of you. I know you, I know you backslid. I know that you went back over there and did this and the third, but I still saw fit to breathe breath into your body. I'm just saying, I wanted to give 
give you another day because I know your heart. I know you mean well. Understand? I just need for you to see me, see yourself the way that I see you. I see you as beautiful. I see you as great. I see you as strong. I see you as a conqueror. I see you as a person that is deserving, that is worthy. And I just need you to shift your mindset so that you can see you the way that I see you. And then you will understand while I keep breathing breath inside of your body while I keep giving you another experience of a brand new day. I do this because I see in you what you don't see and I need you to lock in with me. Come on. I need you to lock in with me so you can see. I need you to lock in with me so I, you can see what I see. I see beautiful. I see beautifully made. I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, yeah, understand that he said everything that God made when he was making it, yeah, he would say that that's good and it's good and it's good and it's good. Everything that he was making in the process of him making it, he was saying after he would finish the product, he would say it was good. So if you, if yeah, 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 understand that. So when he made you, he was like, okay, it is good. So it wasn't finished until it was good. So when you were created and he molded and shaped you, he left you alone because in that moment you were good. Understand that you have to start operating in that goodness understand it, it wouldn't you wouldn't be you you so you are beautiful you are beautifully made understand that he molded and he shaped you exactly how he wanted you you are perfect in his eyesight maybe not in the world but that's the reason why you have to understand that you ain't got no business trying to please this world your job is to please the one that created you you don't have to be in alignment with this world your job is to be in alignment with the one that created you the one that breathed breath into you the one that looked at you you understand and said it is good hello somebody that said because if it wasn't good then it wasn't done understand that that's what you have to know that's how you what you got to operate in every single day of your life you have to wake up and know oh baby it is good I am beautiful and beautifully made I am more than a conqueror I am determined I am right where I'm supposed to be understand that every day this is how you have to look at yourself Remove the reasons, remove the excuses, remove the negative self-talk, the inner dialogue that keeps you stuck in life. Remove all the doubt, all the shame, all the guilt of the past and move forward in your life. Greater. <laughs> Yo, greater is on the other side of that. But you got to push through the challenges of life. You got to navigate through all the chaos. You got to navigate all through the pain. Where you start and where you finish is not going to be the same thing. Understand, the only way that you're going to end right where you start is if that's what you decide to do. The only way that you will lose in this game of life is if you don't play. And the problem is a lot of you guys are simply not playing. Understand that. We, yeah, yeah, we're simply not playing. You're afraid to make those small steps. You're expecting something gigantic to happen, something huge to happen all out the blue. And that's not how this thing works. Understand, this ain't how it works. It's baby steps. It's small steps. You don't do great things by doing great things. You do great things by doing small things correctly. What'd you say, coach? You do not accomplish great things by doing great things. You do accomplish great things by doing small things correctly. Understand that. The more that you do the small things, the more that you build. The more you do the small things, the more that you build. You build and you build and you build and until those small things become big things. That's how you accomplish it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate. Appreciate the small. Yeah, double tap on my screen. See, this is a one day at a time, one task at a time, one thought at a time type of life. Every day, you're not going to learn it all at once. You're not going to change your life all at once. It, 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 yeah, understand, this comes with a daily work. Thank you, Crystal, for the cash app. This right here is daily work. This is a process that you're working on yourself every single day. Every day that you wake up, you owe it to yourself to work more and more on yourself. What are you doing? I'm changing. This is a process. This is not something that is instant. You changing your life, revamping your life, becoming somebody brand new, something that you've never been before. Baby, that don't happen overnight. Understand, this is a process. This is something that you work on, and you're going to be working on it from now until forever. That's just how it works. It's a forever growing, a forever learning thing. That's what you have to do. Learn how to appreciate the small. You do not accomplish big things by doing big things. You accomplish big things by doing small things correctly. Break it down, coach. 
Break it, <laughs> break it, break it down, coach. Hold up. A lot of times you get discouraged because you try to do the biggest things, right? A lot of times you try to do the biggest things. And when you jump out there and you try to do the biggest thing before you master the smallest things, what happens is you do that big thing. And when it doesn't happen, you lose momentum. When you do that big thing that you're really not that skillful at because you skipped all those steps and it doesn't happen, you lose drive, you lose passion. Then all of a sudden you don't want to do it anymore. And what happens in that moment is you throw away your mission. You abort your mission completely because you acted in a way as if you can bamboozle life or finesse life or cut corners with life and that's not how life works baby understand you have to go through it you cannot go over it you can't go under it you can't go around it you have to be prepared to go straight through it what it says is that the race is not given to the swift or the strong but to he that endures to the end you have to be able to endure you got to go through the hard stuff you got to slide through the easy stuff you got to move around when it's the slippery stuff you have to learn how to bob and weave all throughout life it's not going to always have the same flow it's going to be slippery it's going to be dry it's going to get rainy you're going to experience cold this is what's going to happen in your life and if you want instant gratification then this right here this won't be for you if you want somebody to pop up in your life and tell you how to instantly become this that and the third then I won't be the coach for you. Understand that. If you want to do that, I'm not the one for that. Why? Because I teach process. It's a process to this. It's a plan to this. It's work that got to go into this. This is not an overnight thing. This comes with work, intentional work. This comes with dedication. This comes with study. This comes with sacrifice. This, this is what this comes with. When you, you come on now, don't you think that you deserve that? And yeah, don't you think that you deserve that? Thank you so much, 101. I appreciate the love going on over there. Yeah, yeah. Don't you think that you, you deserve that? Baby, you done went through so much stuff in your life. The only way that you're going to be able to get to where you need to be with that solid foundation, good morning to Keisha Hodges. The only way you're going to get to that place in life where you have that solid foundation, where you have something to stand on, something to build on, you have to know what? You have to know exactly what went on at the bottom of that thing. You have to have a solid foundation. So you can't do big things by doing big things. You do big things by doing small things and doing small things correctly. So while you're building your foundation, you're making your mistakes down there. You're, whatever it is that's happening right there, you're learning in that process. You're figuring out what you need to do here, there, and everywhere. So by the time it's time for you to do the rest of it, if anything goes wrong, you know exactly what to go and do. Oh, I know. I can go back over here and fix that. I know how to, I don't have to start all the way over. I ain't got to start. Yeah, yeah. I can just start over from where I messed it up. At, why? Because I know the foundation is already together. I don't have to take out all the walls. I just got to take out the wall that got the mess up on it. I don't have to detach everything from this thing. I know how to do it this way because I know I know the steps. I know how I put it together. Understand, that's the power of following a process. That's the power of not trying to skip steps, of not trying to cut corners, not trying to get it done instantly. You go through everything. So when you get to that hard part in your life, you know, oh yeah, I know exactly how to get out of here. I've been here before. I experienced this before. This right here, this is a stage, not a state. Your confidence is different. Come on. Your confidence is different. Your level of thinking is different. Notepads. Everybody got their notepad? Put we ready in the chat. If you're ready, I got a note for you. Double tap on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so one was, you got to stop making excuses. Stop me having these reasons. It's time to create results, right? Another note that we had was every day that you wait is a day that you waste. Every day that you wait is a day that you waste. You just waste it that day. Next note is, what did I tell you? You don't do big things by doing big things. You do big things. You accomplish big things by doing small things and doing them correctly. Red ink pen right here. Y'all ready? Red ink is just right here. Our greatest mistake is overlooking the power of small. Our greatest mistake. Mm, 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 mm. Ooh, our greatest mistake is overlooking the power 
of small. Leslie Morning, I see you, baby. It's okay to cry over here. This is what we do. See, we don't realize what our mistakes are until we hear it out loud. And it's okay. That's just your confirmation. It's all right. Ain't no, we judgment free. That's a safe space. Double tap on the screen. See, that's, that's the thing. Our greatest mistake is looking over the power of small. We think that we have to do it big. We think that we have to be, it has to be all over the place. No, some things as simple as an apology, simple as a conversation, as simple as, you know, accepting what it is that you said or what you done, correcting your own behavior, holding somebody accountable, something so small could have changed the whole trajectory of everything that was happening in that moment. Understand, we overlook the power of small. We think that we have to do it explosive every single time, that we have to do it extreme every single time, and sometimes we have to step back in life and realize that that, that small thing that I done, that one step that I took, that one conversation, that I had, it changed every single thing about that situation. I could have ruined everything about me. Understand, had I went in there and did the absolute most and called myself doing it big, doing it, yeah, yeah, that, oh yeah, I could have ruined everything. But because I baby stepped it, because I processed what it was that I felt, because I handled it with care, this was the outcome. Our greatest mistake is that we overlook the power of small. I'm telling you, that's what we do on a regular basis. Because we're operating with that fear, I don't want to fail. I don't want to fail. I want you to understand that the only way that you're going to, only way that you're going to experience a successful life, and we're talking about successful life as far as life. We're not talking about on a materialistic level. You guys know I talk about life. I talk about life, your natural life and your spiritual life. The only way that you're going to have a successful life, a successful spiritual life, understand that, is if you fail your way through it. Having a successful natural and spiritual life will bring out the successful life that you're talking about. It'll bring you all those other things. But the only way that you reach that, you don't have to make some mistakes. And people think, yeah, failure is the, op oh, failure is the opposite of success. No, it's not. Uh-oh, wait a minute, coach. Hold on, hold on. You either fail or you succeed. So how is it, how is it not? Failure is not the opposite of success. Failure is a part of success. Unlearn it, unlearn it, unlearn it. Dismantle that, let that thinking go. Some of the greats that you have studied, that you have researched, understand, will tell you that they failed them their way all the way to the top. That if it wasn't for their failures, then they would have never reached the level of success that there are in that moment that it was because of their failures that they went back and they restudied. It was because of the things that they experienced down there. They had to tweak some things, move some things, around in order to get it to do what it needed to be done in that moment. Understand, failing is not the opposite of success. It is a part of success. It is a part of what you're going through. Okay. It's not the opposite. I'm just going to tell you that. Unlearn it. Let it, let it go. That's not, that's, that. come on. Let, let it go. <laughs> yeah, you have you yeah you have you have to you have to make some yeah you gonna bump your head along the way. Come on, Felicia, you gonna you gonna bump your head along the way. You gonna have a yeah you gonna get some bruises along the way. You gonna get a couple of scratches along the way. But every time that you bump your head, you realize what it's something right there. So the next time that you go, you don't go that way because you remember the last time you bumped your head when you went that way. You got to, you got your knee toe up. When you got your knee toe up over there, I know it's something that's hanging over there that tore my knee up the last time. So the next time that you go over there, you do what? You proceed with caution. Why? Because you got damaged the last time that you were over there. You got hurt the last time that you was over there. So you go a whole nother way to avoid you being hurt. A whole nother way or you learn to look out for that spot so you can step all the way over it. But had you not bumped your head, had you not busted up your knee, then you would have never known that. Come on. You would have never known that and you would have never reached that level of success because you learned the route. You strategized. You, you did the work that you needed to do on your way. Now when you go back out there, then guess 
what you do. When you get right there, when you hit that knee, you're looking around. I know it's something over here. You step over it or you move around it. You do what you got to do to avoid making that same exact mistake. When you get over there, when you bump your head, you're like, I know it was a branch or something hanging over here. So now you're more mindful. You're more attentive. You're paying attention to what happened because what? I'm not repeating that same cycle. I'm not going through that same pain. I'm not going to have another concussion. I'm not about to be laid up with an ice pack all over again. So now you're paying attention to what's happening. You see the branch, you go under the branch. Understand that so you avoid bumping your head, but you would have never known that had you not bumped your head, busted your knee the first time. Failure is not the opposite of success. It is a part of success. You fail your way to it. Stop running from failing. Stop running from making a mistake. Stop running from not always getting it right. That's what you're supposed to do. That's a part of life. That's what you're supposed to do. You ain't got to feel no shame towards it. You ain't got to be embarrassed by it. You ain't got to feel no guilt or no, no humiliation about that. Stop letting people make you feel bad for things that you're supposed to experience. Understand that. Stop letting people, make it, allowing people to make you feel bad for things that, that is a part of life. That's a part of life. How else was you going to learn? And sometimes you have to look those folks directly in their face. The ones that's laughing, the one that's making the statuses, the ones that got all the jokes. Sometimes you have to look them directly in their face and say, well, baby, how else was I supposed to learn? If I would have never started the business, never started the brand, if I would have never stepped out on faith, if I would have never went over into that uncharted territory, if I would have never reached out, if I would have never did this, this, and this, then I would have never known anything about that. And guess what? Some of the people that know me would have never known me. They would have never known about my business, never known about my brand. They would have never known or even my name. They would have never known had I not stepped up. So yes, indeed, I had to do what I had had to do to establish what I was trying to establish. Did it happen the way that I wanted it to happen? No. So what am I doing? I'm going back to the drawing board. I'm going to redo it. I'm going to revamp. I'm going to reset. You're going to see me all over again. Sometimes you have to look them in their face and say, hey, I would have never known. Had I not tried. I thank God for not being afraid to try. I thank God for putting myself out there. I thank, my, I thank God for challenging myself to do something that I've never done before. You think it's funny, but I think that, you know, I think it shows a strength. I think it shows me that I'm strong enough to, yeah, I'm strong enough to fail in front of everybody. I'm strong enough to struggle in front of everybody. Yeah, yeah, the difference between me and you is that you want to suffer in silence. I don't want that type of burden. You want to sit and cry alone. I don't want that type of burden. You want to struggle in life and say that's what the world's supposed to do. We're supposed to struggle. No, 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 baby. You're here to struggle if that's what you want to do. I'm here to thrive in life. If it's somebody out here that want to bless me, bless me. If it's somebody out here that want to pour into me, pour into me. If it's somebody that want to help me along the way, help me along the way. That's you. Closed mouth don't get fed. And the Bible also say what you have not because you ask not. I'm not afraid to ask for the help. I'm not afraid to ask for the support. I'm not afraid to tell folk this is what it is. I ain't got to put on no show for nobody. I ain't got to impress nobody. I ain't got to do none of that. That's the difference between me and you. I'm not afraid to get some answers egg on my face. I'm not afraid to, yeah, yeah, to go through what I got to go through for me to be able to get what it is that I'm trying to get. Trust me, I'm going to have the last laugh. Drink water. Because it's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because mm. I'm going to have I'm going to have the last laugh. I'm going to go through what I got to go through. If I got to struggle, then let me struggle. If I, Yeah, I'm going to do whatever I got to do to get to the place that I'm trying to get to. So I'm like, yeah, because I'm going to tell you what, a lot of times you have to understand that the people that's laughing, the people that are joking, the only reason why they're laughing and joking is because they're sitting on the sideline watching. You have hearers and you have doers. Understand that. Yeah, you hear what's going on, but you ain't doing nothing. Double tap on my screen. That right there, that's a red ink pen note. Baby, understand that. You be so caught up and worried 
worried about and stressed out about people that ain't doing nothing with their life. They got the most to say about you and your life and how you live in your life, but they have absolutely nothing going on in their life. And the only reason why they are so well informed about your life is because they're sitting as spectators. They're sitting as haters. They're sitting on the sideline trying to live vicariously through you. They're watching your every single move. They want to see if you're able to do it instead of trying to step out there on faith to see if they can do it themselves. If anybody is the joke, that's the joke. The joke is the fact that you're watching me instead of doing it for you. The joke is that you're so invested in me that you're not doing something in your own life. The joke is you're so caught up in how I'm moving, how I'm living, and what I got that you're not noticing in your own life. You ain't got nothing. You ain't doing nothing. Understand that. You're still in the same place that you was in from elementary school and you have the audacity to laugh. Yes, they have the audacity to laugh. And guess what? Here you is lowering your standards, your vibration, caring about what they think. What you care about what somebody's saying and what they're doing over there on the side watching you. They you in the game. They watching it. That's like going to a basketball game and being a paid player on the court. And you listening to what the folks saying in the stand. <laughs> Wait a minute, cause that's messy. Hold up. Let me drink the water because y'all... <laughs> Wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. I'm coming back. I'm coming. I'm coming back. Hold on. Mm -mm. Your life. Here you is in your life. You living your best life. You out, here, you out here living your best life. You on the court. You in this game of life. You've been in conditioning. You've been over there training, practices. You doing all of that over in your life, right? You the player, a paid player on the court people buying your jerseys doing all of this they supporting you they got your tennis shoes on they clapping for you they know your name when you come out there on the court understand that they announce you you got folks announcing you when you enter into the room and then you have the folk that's sitting out here in the stands these folks are sitting in the stand they came to do what they came to watch you they came to watch you not only did they come to watch you they paid to be there Hello, somebody, baby, you paid to sit in the seat. Understand that every day that you sit and watch my life and not do nothing in your life, you are paying. Understand that your waste, how you paying? You paying with that wasted day. You just wasted your day being concerned about me. You just wasted your day watching my life. You just wasted your day doing something that's not beneficial to you, your growth or your development. Every single day that they just sit and just watch you just to judge you, just to bash you just to yeah that, that's it it's the same thing how dare you be concerned about somebody that's watching you how dare you be so caught up in what somebody that's a spectator that's a hater that's a paid supporter however they want to look at it they still you paying to be here understand that you over oh, yeah and, and you think i supposed to care about what you think that i supposed to care about what you feel no but that's what you do and that's what the enemy wants you to do because that's a distraction they got you caught up in your feelings they got you caught up in what it is that they think about you and understand it's not about what they think about you it's what god thinks about you it's not about you being in alignment with them you have to be in alignment with him understand that it's not about you pleasing them it's about you pleasing him understand that you have got to line this thing up the way that it needs to be lined up you have to pay attention because no matter where you go you're gonna have some haters you're gonna have some spectators you're gonna have some folk that are not gonna like you some folk that's gonna be upset about you and guess what they're gonna lie on you they're gonna lie to you they're gonna go outside of their way to slander you to to belittle you they're gonna go outside their way to do so and you cannot give them the satisfaction of paying attention to that because again whatever it is that the enemy call you you don't give it life until you receive what it is that they're saying when you start receiving what it is that they're saying that's the moment that you start giving life to it you have the power you have the ability to reject it all you have to do is not give it no attention all you got to do is not feed into it 
All you got to do is not exchange nothing with it. You hear it and keep going. What you say, be in it, but not of it. I'm here. I hear you, but I know that that's not for me. Who this fuck? That's not for me. I don't interact with anything that's not in alignment with my assignment. I don't do well or hang out with anything with anybody that's not in alignment with my assignment. You can talk to your tongue hurt. You will never get a response from me. You can type and post all you want. You will never get a response from me. Understand, I'm not doing it. Why? You got bigger fish to fry. Because you should not be that concerned about me. You should not be more concerned about me than you are about you. But some folk can't stand to see. They can't stand to see you win. They can't stand to see you grow. They can't stand to see you evolve. And you're in a, you're in a stage of life right now where you have 103 days left in this year. 103 days left until 2025. And what you cannot afford to do, you can't afford no more reasons. You can't afford no more excuses. Right now, you have to produce some results. You can't afford no more reasons, no more excuses. You're going to have to start showing some results. You're going to have to start showing up in your life. You're going to have to start operating with the mindset of I got to do this right here this for me I can care less how you looking at me I can care less how you feel about me I can care less what you talking about this right here this right here this for me this for me it's a personal journey baby not a group project this right here this for, this right here that I'm doing this for me and I suggest you the same way that you are for watching my life put that energy into yours the same way that you are, are, are analyzing breaking down my life put that energy right there put that energy into yours but some, be, some people be so caught up on your blessing. They be so caught up in your blessing. They be so caught up in your growth and your development and what God is doing in your life that they can't even do that. How you mad at me because I'm blessed? How you, how you mad at me because I'm evolving, because I'm having? How you mad at me because I'm growing in life? And one thing's for sure, two things for certain is this right here. Don't, don't, don't think that it'll only be the outside folk. You got some family members that'll hate on you harder than the people in the street. You got some folk that you didn't, yeah, grew up with, played in the sandbox with, went through elementary and middle school together with. Understand, they know all your trials, all your tribulations, all your hardship. They know all of these things. And guess what? They hate on you more than people out there on the street. They don't want you to have it at all. Wait a minute. We came from the same background. If I ain't Never had it like that. I know you ain't gonna have it like that. Understand? And some of these people you share blood with don't ever think that they're supposed to get a special privileges because y'all are what we consider family by blood. Understand that because those be the main ones that you gotta look out for. All family ain't family. Double tap on my screen real quick. And some of us have had to learn that the harder way. All family ain't family. Understand that. And some of us have had to learn that the harder way. And if that's you, just say ouch and send some stars. If that's you, say ouch and send a badge. If that's you say ouch and send a gift babies all family ain't family and some of us have had to learn that the harder way some of the hardest struggles in our life have come from the family some of the most heartbreaking things come from the family most lies that you didn't heard about yourself then come from the family the most disappointing things have come from the family the most things that you had to endure as a child violated from what the family from people that were supposed to love you people that were supposed to protect you people that were supposed to stand up for you and and you were the one that did the most damage to me. I ain't never been hurt like how I've been hurt in my family. I ain't never been let down the way that I've been let down in my family. And then y'all have the audacity to say blood is thicker than water. The devil is a lie. Which one would you swallow? Come on. Yeah, yeah, come on. Double tap on my screen. Don't get caught up in it. This is a personal journey. What you're doing for yourself right now, this ain't about what's on you. You got 103 days, this is about what's in you. It's time for results. It's time for you to put it out there on the table. It's time for you to put it out there on the table. This ain't about what's on you. Understand, one thing I've been drilling is what we are in this world, but not of this world. In this world, but not of this world. Understand, in this world, but not of this world. And what I need for you guys to understand is that we're not dealing with what's around you. We're not dealing with, with what's on you. We're dealing with what's in you. Understand that what's in you, because what's in you is going to be what's going to produce the results that we need. Understand that you want to grow, you want to evolve, you want to live up to your fullest potential. 
with you? What's in the inside of you? One thing that I tell y'all all the time is what? A man is going to what? A man or woman is going to always behave in a way that is consistent with the way that they think. You know the way that a person thinks by the way that they speak, the way that they show up, the way that they love, the way that they show love to people around. That's how you know what's in that individual based on the way that they live life. So that's the reason why it's so important for you to pay attention to a person's actions over listening to what a person say. A person can say anything when they talk, they talk a good game, but where's the fruit? Where's the results of all the stuff that you speak about? Understand that what? where's the results of all the stuff that you say? We need to see some results. We need to see some fruit. We need to see some harvest. Understand that. And it's a lot of people that do a bunch of talking, but you don't see no action in behind that. Understand that. that, that that's one of the things I tell you, right? As a man, think of so as he. So you have to watch the way that a person behaves or watch the way that a person do life, the way that they treat people so that you can see their action. You can see their results. It's not what's on you because you can be a beautiful disaster. It's not by what's on you because you can be well, de well decorated but completely toxic. It's not about what's on you. It's about what's in you. What's in you is what's going to matter. Joseph, right? Let's talk Joseph. When we talk Joseph, write it down. It's not what's on you. It has to be, it's in you, not what's on you. It's in you, not what's on you. Your focus is what's in you. What's in you? Not what's on you. There's a difference. When we talk about Joseph, here you go. You got Joseph over here. You got his two brothers right there. Main reasons of why I said don't get caught up in family. These are his brothers. They blood brothers. Now, how you got brothers and y'all against each other? If you don't do nothing else, you're supposed to be extremely close with your siblings. A lot of y'all, y'all ready to go to jail or hell in behind your siblings. Mama, they touch my brother. Mama, they touch my sister. But sometimes you have to understand that this right here. Again, like I said before, family, you even got to watch family when you're trying to grow, when you're trying to evolve, when you're trying to live your very best life. They know his brothers. He ain't never did nothing to none of his brothers. Joseph was, Joseph's problem was that he was born, and when he was born, he had favor by his dad. His dad loved him some Joseph. He loved his son so much that he gave him a colorful coat that was a representation of the love that he had for him. So his brothers despised him because of the love that he was receiving from his daddy. Understand that because his daddy loved him so much, his brothers disliked him. Is that not us right now today? Folk right now, they, they, they people they mad at us because of the way that people love us. You mad at me because people support me? You mad at me because people invest in me? You mad at me because people come see me? You mad at me because people want pictures and videos with me so much so that you will go outside your way and you will make a thousand posts and a thousand this and thousand of that to try to discredit, to try to slander me because of the way that other folk love me, support me? You mad at me. Understand? Come on, you have to think about this thing. This is what people do. They see people love you? Oh, you mad at me because they came over here and they bought this for my kids and then buy them for yours? You mean to tell me? I'm not talking about any of your family. The sister be looking like, why you did it for her kids but you ain't do it for mine? Why you gave it to that cousin but didn't? You mad at me for something that somebody else did for me that I don't know nothing about. I didn't, I ain't had nothing to do with that. They decided that they wanted to bless me. They decided they wanted to show up for me. They decided that they wanted to love me and you mad at me for how somebody else loved me. You see the support and the love and you jealous because of the support and the love, but you mad at me and I'm on the receiving end. I ain't even did you nothing. <laughs> yeah. Can I step a little bit? Just somebody say step. <laughs> I do want to step a little bit. Just somebody, somebody put step a little bit in it. Can somebody say step in the chat real quick? Double tap on my screen. I just want somebody to say step. Okay, inspiring queen, you messing with me. I see that. I, I see you messing right there with me. Step. And sometimes it's even in your relationship. You mess around and get in a good old healthy relationship. And here you is. You happy in your relationship. And them folk will go outside of their way to create drama, to create chaos in your relationship. Just because they jealous of seeing you being 
love correctly. They seeing you. Yeah, they jealous of seeing you being loved correctly. They, 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 they jealous of seeing you have somebody that's wanting to put you in your soft girl era. They, oh, why you want to do that for her? And you love her more than she love you. And you doing more for her. Or you doing more for her than, than she doing for you. And, oh, yeah, sometimes it be their sister, their mama. Sometimes it's their best friends. And everybody else. And sometimes it's even your friends. Go right behind your back and get into them folk here. Same person that you dealing with. They over there like, wait a minute, don't you supposed to be their best friend? You seem like you over here more loyal to me than you are to them. How you spraying up your best friend? How you speaking negatively about your best friend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be, again, I told y'all that was going to be a little bit messy. Even in relationships, some folk don't want to see you love correctly. Some people don't want to see you respected. Some people don't want to see you traveling the world. Some people don't want to see you have good things. Some people don't want that for you. Thank you, Larice. They can't stand that. They looking at you like, wait a minute. Why you get that hug? Y'all don't even look good together. You know how people do. Yeah, hate no, hate no anything. Understand that. This is what Joseph Brothers was like. You mad at me because the way daddy loved me. And then it didn't help the situation when it come to find out. You know what I'm saying? It didn't help the situation that Joseph was not anointed. Yeah, favor all on your life, Joseph. We mad at you. So here go Joseph right here. Joseph ain't did nobody nothing. Ain't did nobody nothing. Joseph ain't did nothing but be born right here in this area, right? So much so that Joseph come out, he runs into his brothers, and they do what? They take off his coat, the special coat, the coat of, the coat of many colors, the coat that was a representation of the love that his daddy had for him. This special coat. They took off his coat. They covered it with all the sheep blood and everything, right? Threw him over into a pit. Now, wait a minute. Hold on a second, right? Then all of that, some folk just want to rob you of what's, what's on you. They just, they want to take off what's on you. They took off his coat. They took off the coat that was a representation of the love, of the specialness that that that, that Jacob had, I mean, that Joseph had. They, they, they took him up, took his cold, but they couldn't take his anointing. The anointing was still all over him. He was anointed in the house when he had on the coat. He was anointed in the pit when they took the coat up off of him. It's not about what's on you. It's about what is in you. What's in you is going to yield the results. Understand that you can strip me bare and I'm going to still be anointed. You can strip me bare and I'm going to still have God's favor. You can strip me bare and I'm going to still come back. You can strip me bare. You can lie, you can cheat, you can do all of these things, but guess what? It's not what's on me, it's what's in me and as long as I maintain my same heart, I'm gonna get that back plus some. He says I got beauty for those ashes. I'm counting the tears that fell from your eyes. I'm gonna give you double for your trouble. Everything that you've gone through, I'm gonna give that back plus some. So here go Joseph down there, right? He in the pit at this time. Understand that now he didn't went over into slavery. The brothers go back and tell their daddy. Well, Joseph got ate up by a wild hog. He got a heck on this coat. His daddy mourning. His favorite son, his baby boy. What you say? My baby gone. Sold out. Not by his enemy, but by his brothers. And that is the reason why your boundaries got to be fair and consistent all the way across the board. This is the reason why you can't afford to show no type of favoritism. When you establish a boundary, you have to hold everybody responsible for that. Understand that family ain't always family. Understand, blood family ain't always family. Don't get tied into that because then you'll be giving people special privileges. Then you allow certain people to do certain things and that's not how it's supposed to go. So now his daddy over there mourning. But then what happens here, right? So he's anointed even though he's in the pit. He end up over here. He end up over here. Joseph end up in jail, right? He didn't been sold in slavery. So now, even though he was born, he been he been going through it his whole entire life. That's us, right? He was anointed when he was going through it while he was over here with his brothers. He was anointed right here while he was in the pit and robbed of his coat, right? So it's being replaced, right? I just want you to write in red ink number two. Red ink right there is it's being replaced. And remember, hold into your mind. They took his coat, his coat that symbolized. The love that his daddy had for him, they already took his coat. That's like everybody. You know, they'll go outside their way and they'll rob you. They might get your fire from your job, might make you lose this and lose that. Understand that what red ink pen up here is being replaced. Yeah, you might have to work a little bit, but it's being replaced. Right? So in the pit, he's still anointed in the pit. 
Now he goes into the jail. He's sitting in the jail. He over here doing what he got to do. But one thing's for sure, two things for certain, though, coach, is what? He's still, <laughs> come on. He's still anointed. He was anointed in the house when he was being hated on by his family. He was anointed in the pit when his brothers threw him in the pit. He was anointed when he went to jail. He was still anointed. Like it's not what's on you, it's about what's in you. Understanding anything that you lose is going to be replaced. So yeah, you're never taking losses because every time that something leaves, anytime that, see you, when, when you're operating with the right type of mindset, you didn't lose it, it's being replaced. Fix that inside your mind, right? Fix that inside your mind. I don't take losses, it's just being replaced. Place. It's, yeah, I didn't lose anything. I'm just, it's in a process of being replaced, right? Because when God replaces, he gives you bigger and better. He gives you double, right? I didn't lose anything. It's just being replaced. I'm about, yeah, yeah, that job was removed from me to make room for my replacement. I don't take losses. I have replacements. Understand perspective. It's all about how you look at it. Look at my girl. That's, it's a fact. Go ahead, clap it up, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you look at it that way, you like, ooh, coach, wait a second. Hey, my church folks want to dance a little bit. They like that. Wait a second. I like that, coach. You, yeah, yeah, I like that. That's right. Baby, I didn't lose it. It's being, it's being replaced. I got, I, yeah, you, you, yeah, you, I had to make room for what I got coming. I make, yeah, I didn't lose it. It's just being replaced. That's it. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Surely it's being, it's being replaced, right? So he's anointed in the pit. He's anointed in prison. Well, coach, how you know that he's anointed in prison? <laughs> See, Joseph's issue was the fact that he had the ability to discern dreams. And he had already dreamed a dream that one day he was going to rule over a nation. That's what, the, that's what his brother's issue was. The fact that Joseph had been anointed since he'd been young. That he had the ability, the gift of being able to dream and to discern dreams, to interpret them. He knew how to pull them apart. So his dad knew that this young man got favor all over his life already. So even while he was in the pit, Joseph knew that I'm still anointed here. When he got to prison, he knew that he was still anointed there. And we know that because when the king dreamed the dream, it was somebody that was in prison with Joseph, which meant Joseph had to be talking. Come on, let's be real. Because how would the other, other jail person, well, how did the other prisoner know that Joseph was a person that could discern dreams? that he could interpret dreams if Joseph wasn't already in prison interpreting the dreams for the people. How would they know? Come on, that'd be real. Joseph had to be in the prison already, you know what I'm saying, talking about what his gift was. He had to already be down there saying that God has blessed me with a gift, with a talent. This is something that I'm able to do. He had to already be down there even while in prison, still handling business. That's, it had to happen because how would the prisoner no, how would they know? I, I lost all, that's how I'm gonna say. How else would they know? How else would they know? For the prisoner to come and tell the king, you got somebody down there in your prison. Yeah, yeah, you, you holding somebody right now that's able to interpret that dream for you. You got somebody right there on your premises, right here in your own house where you sleep at, that you can pull from down there and bring up here, and he can tell you exactly what your dream meant. Go get Joseph. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go get Joseph. He go get Joseph. Bring Joseph up there. Joseph interprets the dream, right? And when Joseph interprets the dream, then now Joseph goes from being a person that was hated in his father's house to being in a pit, to being in jail, now to becoming the high priest. Keep going. It's a part of the plan. Write that in your notes. Third hot red highlight. Keep going. It's a part of the plan. What you say, Coach? I said he had his coat took at his father's house, right? There's the coat, he was given the coat at his daddy's house. He had the coat taken when he was thrown into the pit. Then he went to jail. When he went to jail, right? He's sitting down in the jail, he don't have a coat at all. He's been taken, the coat has been taken. But when he go and interpret the dream for the king, then all of a sudden, Joseph is issued a brand new coat. And the coat that he is issued this time is a representation, not just of his father's house, but the high priest coat. He has 
has a coat on that says I'm the man. He has a coat on that says I'm the ruler. He has the coat on that says I'm the high priest. Understand that his coat was replaced with something that was bigger. I'm not saying that his coat from his daddy house didn't mean something to him because that was from his daddy. I'm just saying that the coat that his other daddy gave him was a more powerful coat. The coat that his daddy gave him was a representation of just that house. The coat that the king gave him was a representation that he ruled over all these houses. Bigger is being replaced with bigger and better. You ain't lose it, it's being replaced. It's not about what's on you, it's about what's in you. You anointed no matter where you are in life. You're going to experience some pits. You're going to experience some prison-like situations. You're going to experience some times when you feel like your hands are tied. You're going to experience some times when you feel like you've been lied to, lied on, talked about, used, abused, taken advantage of by the people that you love the most. But guess what? It's not about what's on you. It's about what's in you. And you owe it to yourself to have the what? The same grit? The same wine, the same passion, the same faith all the way through, baby. It's faith till finish. That's it. I have to still operate like I know who my daddy is. I have to still operate like I know that he's a protector, that he's a provider, that he's a brevet, bre pre very present help. I have to operate as if I know that he's a will in the middle of a will. Like I know for a fact that he is the parter. I am the clay and he can mold and shake this thing however he want to understand I have to operate like I know that he's the beginning and the end he's the alpha and the omega like he's the great I am I have to operate with the mindset that I am in alignment with the most high God understand that every knee is going to bow before him every tongue is going to confess before him I am in alignment with him not in alignment with them my job is to please him my job is not to please them. I have to get up every single day and I have to operate with the mindset of if I don't dominate this day then I wasted it. That every day that I wait I waste. I have to operate every single day with a mindset that I cannot afford to be operating with excuses and reasons. I have to have some results. I have to produce some fruit. Every day that I wake up, I have to appreciate even the small gains of life. It's baby steps. I don't do great things by doing great things. I do great things by doing small things correctly and allowing them to build. My consistency, my intentionality, my connection with him every day. I owe it to myself to show up with some results to produce some results. It's not about what's on you. It's about what's in you. Tap into your inner self. You have 103 days left until 2025. How you walk out of this new year, out of this year, into your new year, it's all up to you. How you walk out of here, it's all up to you. You have 103 days to get it right. And right now we being proactive like I told y'all yesterday because y'all know everybody else going to jump out next month with their third day, 90 day challenge, they 60 day challenges, you know, but we being proactive over here. We got started a whole month early because I realized somebody, some people need more time than others. And I wanted to give you a whole month to detox, to clean your mind, your body, your spirit, everything. Your soul, I wanted you to cleanse. So that you can get ready for the remaining 90 days. So those last 90 days can be easy breezy for you. So you can be cautious about how you handle those 90 days. I want you to lock in like you've never locked in before. 
Pay attention to your life, how you show up in your life, how you love and respect yourself. Pay attention to that. Every single day that you wake up and you put 10 toes to the ground, I want you to sweat yourself. Tell yourself how beautiful you are and how much you love you because it's no love like self-love and you cannot love anybody else until you first learn how to love yourself. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This walk, word, and worship. We do this every day, Monday through Friday, right here on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. It's your daily dose of inspiration and motivation and for some folk, it's your confirmation, right? To get back on your good foot, be in your best mood. As you walk away from this live video, I want you to walk away with great energy. I want you to walk away with a smile on your face. I want you to walk away feeling full. Understand that. But if I gave you what you needed this morning, if I blessed your soul this morning, uplifted your spirit this morning, send me some love. Double tap on my screen. Send me some love if you got what you needed this morning. If you picked up what it was that I was putting down. Thank you so much, Kristen. Thank you so much, Anissa. If I bless your soul this morning double tap on my screen saturday september the 28th i'm on my way to dallas texas i got six more tickets six more tickets i got on there for dallas texas dallas texas where y'all at i'm coming to dallas texas saturday september the 28th i need y'all to meet me out there that's right go to event bright get in the room tour dallas event bright get in the room tour dallas we got six seats left for dallas texas i need y'all to go and get y'all ticket if you love my energy online you're gonna love me in person i promise promise you the get in a room tour is a full experience yes we will have refreshments yes we will have guest speakers yes we will have a loud dj yes we got the best host in the world i yeah, i gotta say it so i need y'all to meet me out there and it's from 6 p.m to 10 p.m which means it's the after party for everything that's going on out there you ain't gotta skip nothing to get to me another that go to what you're gonna go to and then i'm gonna see you in dallas texas saturday september the 20th eighth get in the room tour i can be your after party tell your friends we over at 10 o'clock so if you want to go get on them four couches you still gonna have time if you want to go out after that come in your outgoing attire we ain't gonna judge you just come on and sit down and get that spiritual food before you go you just might change your mind and say that four five hundred dollars on that vip section okay all right so go ahead and tag your best friend the one you go out with tell them hey look let's go see coach saturday september the 28th we in dallas Texas, Eventbrite. Go to Eventbrite, grab your ticket right now. I got space for two more vendors in Dallas, Texas. If you want to be a vendor, get your ticket, screenshot it, and screenshot your logo. Send it to me so we can get you on the list. But the grand finale. Oh, where my New York is at? Oh, where my New Jersey people at? Where my New Yorkers at? Where my Jersey folks at? Thank you, Tish, for the cash app. Where my New Yorkers at? Where my Jersey folk at? Where my D.C. people? Where my Virginia people? Where my Baltimore people? Where my folks at real quick? Where, 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 where my folks at real quick? I need y'all. Like, ooh, come on. Double tap on my screen. Where my folks at real quick? I need y'all. Double tap, because guess what? Else? I'm coming to New York City. Hello. I'm going to be in the Bronx Saturday, October the 26th. The grand finale for the Get In The Room tour and when i say we coming to turn the city upside down philly philly y'all gotta be in the building come on it ain't but a train ride away for y'all come on it ain't but a train ride away i need for y'all to understand something real quick when i say on our next we're gonna be on our next baby understand i'm so super excited we got guest speakers that's gonna be opening lanice brown the victorious visionary will be there as well ddj tbs we got kirby butterfly hosting this thing when i say fully loaded with the food i'm um, cooked by nature gonna be providing the food for y'all out there. Sweet baby treats gonna bring out bring out the treats for y'all. When I say I need everybody up north to go to Eventbrite and get that get in the room tour, New York, the grand finale. I need you to go like yesterday. Yesterday you should have went. We got. I'm talking about the thing is October the 26th, and y'all got 20 tickets left on the Eventbrite. It is first come first serve. After them 20 tickets is gone, it's gonna be standing room only. I'm gonna tell y'all that right now. Y'all know how tight spots is in New York, so if you have not got your ticket i suggest you go to eventbrite get in the room tour new york and get your new york is not playing first off i thought philly was a problem but y'all ain't playing yeah because philly sold out in 48 hours so y'all 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 was not playing about seeing me in philly so i'm gonna tell y'all right now saturday october the 26th i'm coming to the bronx new york from 1 p.m to 5 p.m the eventbrite link is live right now now, go to Eventbrite, get in a room tour, New York, grab your grand finale ticket right now. Because we in a bit, where, I'm going to tell you what, 
See me there. You're going to know all you need to know. Saturday, October, Saturday, October the 26th, New York, September the 28th. We are in Dallas, Texas. I love me some you. I want you guys to go and have the best day ever. If you're not a part of my Patreon, you're doing yourself a disservice because trust me when I tell you, we give it up in there. We have prayer every Tuesday and Thursday, study group on Thursday night. All you have to do is click the link that's in my bio, scroll down to where it says mental health support group, select that $10 tier and become a part of the chosen family right now today. I love me some you and chosen family i'll see you at 12 p.m eastern standard time inside the patreon everybody else i'll see you guys on tomorrow i love you guys enjoy the rest of y'all day all right guys i absolutely love y'all i want y'all to have the best day ever on purpose go out and enjoy your day because you most definitely deserve it and i will see you guys on tomorrow